Hello and welcome to the Stop Drop In It podcast. This is episode 64. Wow, it has been quite a while since I have recorded a podcast episode. I think it's been three, maybe even four weeks by the time this goes up. I did not mean for there to be such a long break between episodes, but life just got super busy. For those of you who don't know me and are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you joined me. My name is Lisa. I am coming to you from Long Island, New York. And as you can probably see, it is kind of warm out today, judging by what I'm wearing, which I will get into in a minute. But yeah, so I didn't mean to take such a long break from podcasting. Life has been really busy. Work has been busy. Holidays, birthdays, just just things going on, everybody. But um, the good news, the good news is, since it's been a while, I have quite a lot to catch up with you guys on. So I have a whole bunch of works in progress today. I have a new cast on. I've got, what do I have? I've got Knitworthy. I've got a bunch of whips, basically, and I've got some new yarn, including a brand new yarn to share with you guys. So I'll talk about that in my acquisitions section. But for now, let's just dive right in and let me tell you guys what I am wearing. This is not at all what I was planning on wearing today. I was planning on wearing a long sleeve sweater, but mother nature, you guys, it is the tail end of November. Today is Monday, November 28th. Yeah, I think it's the 28th of November. And we are back in the 50s. I, this weather is has been so up and down lately. I'm not complaining, but, um, Yeah, I I tried to put on a sweater today, and then when I was just moving around, vacuuming, and then gathering all of my whips and everything together for the podcast, I just started sweating, and I was like, I cannot stay in this sweater. So I started um, racking my brain and trying to figure out like what I was going to wear, because I didn't want to wear a shawl because it's hot, and I didn't want to have something around my neck. Um, And then I remembered about this little sleeveless sweater, which I seriously never wear. I don't think I've ever even worn it since I finished it. But it turns out it is perfect for today. And I'm going to tell you why I never wear it. And that's because usually it's really cold. I don't know. The weather, you guys. It has to be the right weather to actually be comfortable in the sweater. So... This sweater is a test knit that I did for Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fiber Co. A few years ago, I was podcasting. I think it was my first year of podcasting when I did this test knit for Annie. And this is called the Journey T. And the reason that I never wear it is because it's it's a strange... I love the design, but it's a strange weight for a sleeveless sweater. So... This sweater, the yarn, it's a worsted slash Aran weight yarn, which is pretty warm. And that's why like I'm having, I have such a hard time finding an occasion to wear this sweater. Um, When I envisioned it for myself, when I agreed to do the test knit, I envisioned wearing this over a long sleeve shirt, like a long sleeve t-shirt or something. I just don't have the right item in my wardrobe and I still just haven't purchased the right thing to wear underneath this. So I think that this could look really cute like on top of a long sleeve t-shirt but since I don't have the right thing in my wardrobe it's just been sitting because if I wear a worsted weight sweater usually that means that it's pretty cold outside and when it's pretty cold outside I want something that's going to cover my arms so I want sleeves on my sweater. So the sweater, even though it's super cute, has, has just sat in my drawer ever since I finished it and I literally have never worn it 
other than just like for the podcast episode when I did the recording. So it actually, it feels really good to take this out and, and have this to show you guys again today. And I'm actually really comfortable in it. It is the perfect little thing for this weird in-between weather. When I made it the first time, it was January or February. So it was like really like dead in the middle of winter. And then at that time, like the transitional season is going into spring. So the weather is, is starting to warm up. And I find that when I wear short sleeve or t sleeveless items that are knit, I want the fabric to be way lighter. And between this being worsted weight and having color work, it's actually quite a thick material. So it's just a strange little garment, but it's actually working out very splendidly for today. I'm finally not sweating, but I'm warm, but my arms are like, they're breathing. Ah, it's actually really perfect. Um, so it's been obviously quite a long time since I shared about this little top on the podcast. So. I have all the information on my Ravelry. I always forget at the beginning to say this, but you can find out more about all of my projects either on my Ravelry page, which is lisajack78, or I do share a lot of my things on, on my Instagram. So if you scroll back quite a ways, you'll see this sweater on my Instagram from 2021. Early, early 2021, I think, um, something around there, maybe January 2021. So, oh yeah, <sighs> so out of practice. <laughs> My Instagram is at Lisa Westervelt Flute Studio. So I love the yarn for this sweater. It is, um, let me stand up, so let me just get this. So it's, you know, I'm wearing kind of mid, a mid-rise jean kind of mid-rise to high-waisted um, and so it's it's not cropped but it is definitely on the shorter side you can tell it's been in my drawer because it is wrinkled and I didn't want to steam it because again I was sweating um, so the the fabric here let's see if I can get it to focus in it's really really pretty the yarn is West Yorkshire spinner I think it's the croft I do not remember the colorway. Both of the colors are the Croft, and I absolutely love the yarn. I actually, at the time, went back and purchased more to knit another sweater out of it. So I have yarn to knit another garment, considering maybe a weekender or something. I'm not sure. But the construction of this was bottom up, in the round, and then the color work when you split for the sleeves this was all flat and that means like doing color work on the pearl side of the fabric which i hadn't really done too much before this sweater but it worked out really fine i i go very slowly when i'm working color work on the pearl side because i just don't have a good rhythm with it but my tension i found is really even when I knit color work flat. Um, it doesn't bunch up at all like it can when I'm just concentrating on the knit side of the fabric. So I'm really pleased with my tension. Um, it is exactly the same on the front as on the back and I put a cute little label in the back that says this is the back so that I would know <laughs> which way was supposed to be which. So yeah it's actually I'm really enjoying wearing this today the light is gorgeous today it's shining on this really well the color work pattern was really really simple again the only thing tricky about the color work was that it was knit flat and not in the round so you did have to manage the color work on the wrong side of the fabric so that's not going to be something that is for everyone but between the Erin worsted weight of the yarn and the fact that there's no sleeves and that the body is pretty, it's not cropped, but it's shorter. This was a pretty quick knit. So I was able to knock this out in just a couple of weeks. So yeah, if, I don't, I don't know if you guys are interested in a pattern that doesn't have sleeves, but is a thicker weight garment than a typical like 
like normally if I were knitting finger like a sleeveless garment I would be probably knitting something more lacy or something definitely more lightweight in a fingering weight so this was just something different and that's the journey tea by Annie Lupton of Boho Chic Fabrico I have several whips to share with you guys today. The first one is one that you guys have seen for the last couple of episodes and the one that I am so super excited about. It's getting close, you guys. This is my Easy V by Caitlin Hunter. And I have finished the body and one sleeve. It's kind of hard to to show this to you guys in here but all right so body look at how gorgeous that is so happy and then I sat and worked on this color work during the Thanksgiving parade the other day so I think the day before Thanksgiving I knit like the solid part of the sleeve and then I knocked out the color work and got that finished up I actually needed to snatch the needle from my twists and turns shawl to actually do the ribbing for the body. I was searching all over my apartment for my size US 4 long circular needle. I knew I had one and I could not find it anywhere. Um, I just couldn't find it. And then finally it dawned on me that it was the needle I was using for my twist and turn um, cow shawl because it was very long in the same size. So I was at a point in the shawl where it wasn't currently on the needles. And so I, I set that shawl aside for a while and <laughs> snatched the needles from it and finished off the ribbing. Um, and yeah, so that was convenient that that shawl was at a point where I could just take the needles without having to put it on waist yarn or anything. Um, and then I finally sat down just over this long weekend for the holiday and did the sleeve. I am in love with how this sweater is turning out. I'm so excited. This, I am really eager to just get the second sleeve done. So I think I can do it in about two to three days of knitting. I work is so busy right now, so I actually don't have the hours in my day to spend knitting for the, this particular moment that normally I do. So I think it'll take me two or three like dedicated nights to just finish up this sleeve. But I really want to have this as a finished object really soon. Although with the way the weather is right now, it's going to be too hot to wear it. So I'm a little bit concerned, you guys, because all I have left of my main color, so this is my main color, and I don't know if we're focusing or not. There we go. So this is some yarn that I had in my stash that I had gotten from somebody's D stash. So this is Quince and Co and it is the Lark base, and the colorway is Marsh, which I wanna say is number 122, because I was just looking at it the other day. Um, and so now all I have left is this. So I had not exactly seven balls of this, or seven skeins. It was like six, and one of them was already wound into a ball, so I like I didn't weigh it. I didn't exactly know how much I was starting with. It was more than six, but less than seven complete skeins. So I'm just like, I'm crossing my fingers that this is gonna be enough. The, because the sleeve has so much color work on it, I'm hoping it will be. I have to do about eight inches of sleeve, but then I have to still have enough to do the two inches of ribbing. So we'll see if I have enough of that. Um, yeah, so it's been a while since I've chatted with you guys, so I will just go over my colors one more time. This was like a real hodgepodge sweater, which I always love doing. I, 
I was determined to use yarn that I already had in my apartment to knit this sweater. This pattern is like a perfect stash busting project. If you have enough of a quantity of the main color, then because of the color work, you can just easily find whatever is in your stash. Um, I didn't have any worsted weight spin cycle in my stash, which is their dream state base, but I had some hand spun. And so I knew that I wanted to use my hand spun for the project. So this is some fiber that I spun up. It's Frabjus Fibers and it is in the sweater weather colorway. And you can see that my yarn, this is not a worsted weight. It's, it's kind of really hard to, I just dropped it. Cause we always do that here. But this is definitely not a worsted weight yarn. So what I am doing, it's a little bit thick and thin. Some spots are thicker than others. But what I'm doing is holding it. Whoops. Oh my gosh, I'm just trying to show you guys. So I'm actually holding two strands together from two separate balls. So I think I think by holding this double, I'm getting close enough to a worsted weight that it is working really nicely um, and then I had just dyed up with my natural dyed yarn I was testing a new base and so this is a worsted weight base and so I had just finished dyeing up these two colors the pink was dyed with avocado and the yellow the greenish yellow was dyed with some goldenrod leaves so not the flowers for this one, but just like the leaves that I had left over from when I dyed with the flowers a year ago. So I thought that these would all go super nicely with the hand spun. I just love all of those together. And by putting it together with the olive green, I thought it would be kind of a nice kind of fall, fall vibe going on. So. Yeah, so I hope that this will be a complete finished object by the next podcast. So I think I'm going to knock the sleeve out this week and then hopefully get it blocked and wearing it within a couple of weeks. So that is super exciting. That one is getting so close now. And then because I mentioned my twists and turns shawl, let's talk about that one. I'm going to grab it. You guys, this shawl has been sitting untouched for quite some time, but I did finally pick it up again the other day and worked another little section of it. I am still not finished with Clue 2, and that's okay. I'm just I'm going to take my time with it. As I said, I needed to snag the needles from this project for... Uh, the bind off, the ribbing and the bind off of my Easy V sweater. And so this is what we have. I still, I think I had showed you this much last time, but I went ahead the other day and I finally added this cable section. I don't even know which way is up and which way is down, but let me see if I can get this to focus in. There we go. Yeah, so I finally finished this last night. This cable section actually only took me two sessions of working on it. I got most of it done in one session and then finished off the rest of it last night um, and then bound it off. So there's lots of I-cord bind offs in this pattern. I'm obviously not giving spoiler warnings anymore because it's like, a full month past. Yeah, I think we're just like one month fully past the MCAL being revealed. So not gonna stress about that. Um, yeah, this, let's see, which is the front side? This is the front side. So I think that this is upside down now, but this, this first section was kind of, I don't wanna say that it was controversial. I think, it kind of was a little bit 
because the process of it was so, 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 so tedious with all of the casting on and binding off to do the loops to make these little braided sections. But I think that everybody really liked the finished result of what it looked like. So I think clue one was fine, even though like it was a slog and very tedious and time consuming. I think that the end result of clue one made it like sufferable. It was, yeah, because you wouldn't say insufferable. It was sufferable, like it was, it was worth all of that casting on and binding off because this is just so cool and yeah, it's, it's so cool. And then, so clue two, it's, you know, I think people started getting surprised that, like, the shawl just keeps getting, like, longer and longer. <laughs> these, um, these short row sections, I'll show you this side, I think, were super, super easy and fun. I think where this section lost a lot of people was when he mirror image, I don't remember which, which side was which, right? But one of the sides, you were doing everything knitting. And then the other side, for some reason, to make it like a perfect mirror image, which I still can't wrap my brain around why this would be the case exactly, but everything was purled. There was so much purling. And you know how some people feel about purling. I am not one of those people that really dreads purling, but it is slower. And so there's just kind of like, you know, there's already like a little bit of that second sock syndrome feeling when you've got one section and then you have to do it all again, right? And so it went pretty well with the knitting section, but then when you've got that like second section syndrome of having to repeat the whole thing, and then when you get to it, you realize it's all purled, you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, right? So, so I had done all of that. I talked about that last time and I love my colors. I'll tell you uh, what colors I'm using in a minute and, and all of that. So yeah, so actually until just the other day, this just sat in that state for like a full month. And so I was hoping to have both of these cable sections finished before I recorded the podcast, but I didn't quite get there. I think that I probably will have the other one finished before I finish editing and releasing the podcast. So if I do get that done, I'll insert some pictures um, of, you know, it completed on both sides and what it is looking like, because that would officially be the end of clue two. So hopefully next time I share this project on the podcast, I will be at least on clue three and not still hung up with this section. I really enjoy knitting cables though. Cables are fun. I know that there's a whole bunch of eye cords that I'm gonna have to knit in this purple color, which is the accent color, to like slip and weave all through these cable-y things somehow. I'm just not gonna think about that yet. I think that's a clue three thing, so I'll get there when I get there. Um, but yeah, I think that um, this section shows the color of my yarn and all the speckles really well. I'm really glad that I chose the lighter color to be the one that would have the cables because the cables still really spot, pala. the cables still really pop. It's not too busy with the speckles for the cables to show. I think, um, I think they would have also been okay in the darker colors because they're not speckly, they're tonal. Um, but yeah, so I've got, I've weaved and stevened this one. So this end right now is popping through on the right side. So I'm gonna have to trim, to trim that still. But yeah, I think, I think that right now, this is kind of what we're, what we're, what we've got going on. I have no idea. I think it looks really cool. Like I've been seeing everybody's, you know, the finished, those who have actually finished it when you wrap it all around and everything and the the different sections layer and it looks pretty cool so we'll see um it's you know this one is just gonna get done when it gets done i 
I have no deadline for myself. There are other projects that um, I'm just more interested in having completed. I like to enjoy the process with Stephen's shawls because the techniques are all so new and everything. So I think if I really focused on finishing this one, I just wouldn't be able to knit on anything else. And then that would kind of make me, I'm going to say angry, but kind of angry, right? Because I want to just be able to knit on like, I like to rotate my projects. So yeah, I'm just going to do a section here and a section there and just let it finish in its own time. Um, the yarn that I'm using was gifted to me from Wonderland Yarns. I'm a brand ambassador for them. You can always use the code YARNVIP to get 15% off your yarn or your fiber on the Wonderland Yarns website. Um, so the I'll just show you my colors. This is Tulgy Wood and this is what it looks like in the skein. It's like a beautiful deep dark tonal brown and this is a full skein. I have just this much left of the first skein. So I've already used quite a bit of that one. Um, the accent color is just one skein and so it's called C Contrary Wise and it's just gorgeous. It's my most favorite shade of purple ever in the whole world. It is so pretty. So that's contrary wise. And, and the contrast color, um, it's kind of falling apart a little bit here. This one is called Toadstool. And this is what it looks like in the skein. So it's a beautiful, lightly speckled, it's like a creamish, tannish creamish yarn with light purple fuchsia and greenish speckles in it. And I still have this much left of my first skein of that. So I think that this should probably be enough to get me through the next cable section. Might have to dip into the other one. This is on their Marianne base. So um, what is it? It's their sock yarn base. There's a lot of yardage in it. It's 475 yards. And it's 85% fine superwash merino wool and 15% nylon. So this is their sock yarn. There's so much yardage. 475 yards is such generous yardage. So I have a feeling that this will get me through that other cable-y section there. But yeah, so no rush with that. That is my twists and turns and cow shawl. All right. I have... A brand new cast on that I am excited to share with you so let's move into casting on so as I said a few minutes ago in discussing my easy V sweater I have been testing out a worsted weight base with my naturally dyed yarns and I think last time at the end of the podcast I showed you a bunch of different shades of brown that I have achieved using black walnut. So I'm going to show you those colors again, but I finally cast on a sweater and I'm actually very far along in it and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So, um, all right, this is the base undyed on its own. So this is just in its undyed state. So I just kept one skein bare because I knew what project I wanted to knit with it. And then when you dye with black walnut, like the initial dye bath is going to give you like a really nice, rich brown. So I had several different dye baths to choose from, but this is just one of the medium brown colors that I achieved with black walnut. And it's just like this beautiful, medium, I don't, I don't want to say bronze, but like just, just like a nice, good medium brown. It's so pretty. And so I had the undyed, so you can see like the, the depth of color that I was able to get from Black Walnut. And then when you keep reusing the dye bath, 
what you're doing is you are trying to exhaust all of the color that you can. Um, you want to try not to waste your dye materials. So you just kind of keep reusing the dye baths until you don't get any more color or the color is just so insignificant that, you know, you've, you've just exhausted the color. So from one of the exhaust baths, I have this much lighter tan color. And this one kind of reminds me like teddy bear or something. So I don't know if it was exactly the same dye bath, but as an example, you can see just the difference between how rich the dye bath starts out. And then when you, I think I dyed five skeins at a time with the black walnut because I had quite a bit of material. So after like five skeins of the, the deep color, when I put another five skeins in, the color saturation was much, much weaker. So, those three colors together look like that. And then I didn't have a shade quite dark enough for what I needed. So you can alter the color to get much deeper than this by doing an after bath in an iron water dip. So I did that and I got this amazing rich like chocolatey mud kind of brown it's so deep it is really difficult to get these dark deep colors out of natural materials black walnut is like one of the most well known for being able to achieve a color like this so by doing an iron after bath i was able to modify this color to this, which is a pretty huge difference. So I have this, these four colors that I, I guess I'll hold them this way, that I had designated for a very specific color work project that has been in my queue for quite a while. So let me pull that out. The project that I am talking about is I really wanted to knit myself a Feel the Burn sweater. You guys, I love this so much. Oh my goodness. I've gotten the whole entire body done. And it is so pretty. So let me tell you what's holding me up from finishing it. A couple of things. Um, okay, so this is Feel the Burn and it's a pattern that Caitlin Hunter did free. So you can go get this pattern for free. You should, though, make a donation to Meals on Wheels because that is an organization that Bernie Sanders supports. So the whole idea of everybody making these free patterns was to raise money for some good causes that Bernie Sanders is a big fan of. So obviously this is a fun take on the mittens meme and last winter I knit some of the mittens for my husband. And I might knit myself some Bernie Mittens too, especially with my leftovers, but I really wanted to do this cute little color work sweater. So um, Caitlin Hunter designed this to be like a little crop, crop top sweater. I don't really do the crop top. I mean, I knit a bunch of them, but um, yeah, I just, I, I lengthened the body a little bit. So let me stand up. So I think... I think I added like an extra inch to this section of the body here. So it's still, it's still gonna be pretty short. And, but I think it's gonna be like an okay length. It's gonna still cover like the top rise of my jeans. Um, now, I have a couple of things holding me up. I did steam block the top of it. I have not yet uh, blocked the bottom color work. So you can just see like the difference this is how I love how this yarn is knitting up. But this is the color work, unblocked. And then this is the color work, steam blocked. And for some reason, and I have not ever had this happen with, um, with any of her necklines before. I've knit several, several Caitlin Hunter patterns. I've done her Sedultna crop top which 
would probably be the most similar to this. And that neckline fits me fine. So can you guys see just the shape of this neckline and then the way that the color work is? It's like, it funnels up a little bit. I don't know if I should have knit one size smaller because like you can see the way that this is, like my shoulders are kind of right here. And I think my shoulders might be too wide for this. So this is not wet blocked yet. So I'm hoping I can put it on. Maybe I'll put it on and show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, my hope though is that, you know, like I steam blocked it, but hopefully wet blocking will like expand this color work at the top this way a little bit more so that there's more room over my shoulders. <sighs> Otherwise, I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't really want to take the whole thing apart and then knit just one size bigger. I just feel like it's not quite wide enough for my shoulders. I knit the same size that I always do of hers and they all have fit me really, really fine. So, um, and then the other thing holding me up from finishing is I cannot decide whether I want this to be short sleeve or whether I want to lengthen the sleeves to long sleeve. I just can't decide. And literally, if I do the short sleeves, all I have to do is put ribbing on. Like, this is so close to being done. Um, I just don't know what to do. I don't know if I should block it first and try it on and then reevaluate. I really don't wanna have to knit this whole thing again. It's, it's so pretty. I love the way it looks. But I also wanna be able to wear it but I was also knitting it mostly as a sample to show how my yarns knit up. So I could just keep it as a sample, but I would still be able to like to still be able to wear it. So this is where I am right now. I'm going to do a quick like change a and then show you guys like the fit that I'm talking about. Okay. Now that I have it on, I feel like it's okay. Um, yeah, so the fit, you know, she's notorious for like having her schematic of her, her little drawing. The necklines look really kind of loose and drapey and like drapey in the back, right? Like just the way that she sketches them out. The neckline always, in actuality, doesn't appear to be what is shown. And I know that a lot of people alter her necklines. Um, I've never had to before. And, you know, I'm going through all the different project pages and a lot of them have like even worse funnel neck than this, but others, there were like a couple others where the neckline actually did pretty much match what she had drawn. And so I'm wondering if like knitting a size up would have done that. I really like this though. Oh my goodness. Maybe I should just finish it, like do the short sleeves. Like now that I, I don't know. So let me stand up. So I'm like hiking my pants up because I don't want my belly showing. So again, this is not blocked, just a little steam blocking on the yoke. So, you know, this should be boxier when this part is blocked out, right? Um, so I wonder like if I show you guys how, so you see like how high the neckline sits in the back. I did, you know, do the short row shaping I don't know how to best show this to you guys because I can't see now what you guys are seeing. But oh, why um, why did the light just get all really weird? Okay, that was weird. All right. Um, I think the light is okay. Bra straps falling. I hate that. All right. So I don't know. Like now that like it it. This feels comfortable, like it doesn't, it doesn't feel too tight. It's just that this sits kind of high, but it's not uncomfortable. Um, so I don't know, I don't know what to do. Like, should I just leave it? I think I just want to leave it. Um, and then, I don't know, I could do like a full on wet block so that this part will, will actually like relax and expand. Um, my yarns are all non superwash. So it's not going to like grow drastically. 
in blocking. It's just like the stitches are just gonna kind of all relax into one another. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so the other thing is, before you guys all yell at me because I didn't do a gauge swatch, I did check my gauge after the fact, and my gauge is spot on. So doing a gauge swatch in this case wouldn't have, it wouldn't have made a difference in like what this is, like the fit of all of this. I really think that the only difference in how this would have sat would have been to knit like one more size up, I think. I don't know. I really want to know what you guys, like what has been your experience with her necklines? Have you knit this sweater? This feels very comfortable. It's just um, a little higher, I think, than I was initially initially thinking it was going to be. I'm also like, I just, I have plenty of yarn to make the long sleeves. I just can't figure out what I want to do. I'm sitting here like thinking, oh, I'll get so much more wear out of it if I make it a long sleeve sweater. But then at the same time, like a day like today, this feels like really perfect. So it would be nice not to have the sleeves on it for that. So I'm just kind of like, I, I just don't know how I want to finish it, but I'm really, really loving it. I love the black walnut colors. I mean, this range of colors to all come from a nut, right? Like nature just blows my mind constantly. So yeah, so I am, I'm super pleased. I'm super pleased with, with the yarn, the way that it's knitting up. It's just, like what do I want to do about the neckline um I think it's I think it's going to be okay and then I think you know like as it I just don't know that this part is going to loosen at all in the blocking maybe it will so I don't know we can continue to talk about that next podcast episode because hopefully <laughs> this will be finished and I can just wear it and show it to you guys um all right so and that is it for casting on. Let's move on to Knitworthy. Okay, Knitworthy. I have two very Knitworthy boys in my life. That is my son, Owen, and my husband, Bryce. I am so lucky that they both really like my knitting so much and and they're always really happy and feel really honored to receive a knit gift from me. So most of the time, they are the only two people that I will knit for, aside from myself. Every once in a while, I will knit a gift for somebody. But Owen had a birthday um, on November 22nd, so my little guy is now a big eight-year-old. I cannot believe he is eight. When I started this podcast, he was just a few weeks shy of six, and now he's like totally big kid, right? Um, so over the summer, he had asked me, like I told him to pick out some sock yarn for new socks because his feet are growing. And so he went to my little stash of sock yarn and he picked out this yarn, which is absolutely gorgeous. This is, of course, Nidoli Things, and um, this is what it looks like, kicked up. Why the light is, there we go. Oh, that looks so much better. That looks better. Okay. I have never knit with one of her, what I, I call these like the, the barber pole yarn. These are like the zebra yarns, I think is what they're called where like the base comes like like that like twisted with that with that barber pole barber pole look right there and so i have several oops I'm dropping it again i have several of these from her but this is the first time i'm actually knitting with one and so it's really cool to see how it's knitting up and then this is the mini that came with it for the coordinating heel and toe yarn. Um, so you can see there's the tail end of it. How's that? I can't show, oh my gosh. 
this is a struggle today guys this is a struggle um, so you can see the little bit of the barber pearl striping at the tail end of that there and so I was just always been really curious like how these are gonna knit up oh the color is called that fall feeling and this was a colorway from September 2020 so Owen's favorite colors are orange and blue and so this also has some brown and some purple and these colors are just spectacular um, now this is stinky okay <laughs> so my apologies it, it won't look stinky and we don't have smell of vision here right so um, I finished one sock and I gave this to him for his birthday and I still have to knit the other sock but I mean look at how that is working up like the stripes that barber pole striping is actually really subtle it almost ends up looking like like little stripes or little speckles in there so so pretty and the um the heel and toe yarn i feel like the sun is at a weird angle right now and i can't quite get the focus right with the light there we go so don't focus on my face focus on the cuff there we go so it's so pretty um <laughs> so this is kind of something that i do often is i gift just one <laughs> sock or just one mitten for the actual occasion and then still have the whole other one left to go and this is the first time i gifted owen just one and he was fine with it he um he right away as soon as he opened it he put it right on his foot and then it stayed on his foot for like a day and a half I actually had to pry it off of his foot yeah i had to take it back <laughs> so he he's already worn this for like probably 30 hours or something it doesn't smell but yeah I just I wanted to have this as a reference because the length is really good um, I mean that is the one advantage with gifting somebody only one is that you can make sure it fits before you do the whole other one so that is the sock that I am making for Owen and the pattern is the half pint sock pattern it's two pa it's two sizes so there's a smaller size for like smaller size kids feet and then a larger size and so the difference is the amount of stitches you cast on for the smaller size you cast on 44 stitches and for the larger size which I did this time you cast on 52 stitches and can you guys believe that he and I can almost share socks now I can get this on my foot the heel is just a little bit short on me but the width is perfect because I usually do 56 stitches for my socks and so this is just four stitches difference so basically we can we can almost share socks my eight-year-old and I practically have the same size feet which is just really weird I have very small very small feet size five size five and a half and his feet just keep growing as they do so that is um, the knit worthy Owen socks and then I made progress on Bryce's birthday socks he just got the yarn for his birthday I didn't even start knitting them for that <laughs> his birthday is three weeks before Owen it's November 1st so my poor husband he's a good sport he has very big feet he wears a size 12 which is pretty big he's also got very wide feet so I got this yarn, which it's hard to see, but um, this is Gage Dye Works and it is the Blue Heron colorway. It is from their Checklist of Birds yarns. And um, last time I showed this to you, I had only done the toe and it was super wide. And what I did was at that time I had cast on the largest size so I think there's there's four sizes and I used a size zero I think I'm is it a size zero I think so yeah I'm using a size zero needle and I had cast on the largest size which I don't remember how many stitches that was but it was looking big and when I got done with the toe I 
had him try it on his foot and it was just a little bit wide. So I said, you know what? I'm not that far into this. I'm just gonna rip back. So I ripped back a bunch. I didn't do the complete thing over. Um, but I, rip, I ripped back as far as I needed to go to get back that I hadn't increased past the next to largest size. So I'm knitting him now size three of four. And I think it's, it's either 84 stitches or 88 stitches. It might be 84. So these now fit him and I have knit this much. So I just have a little bit more to go before it will be time to do the heel. So I need to try it on his foot again to make sure that I am not making them too long or too short. This is my first time knitting toe up socks. So that's something new and different. I've always only done cuff down. So yeah, but he, um, he likes blue herons and he lived on blue heron drive in one of his childhood houses. So I thought that this would be a really good colorway. I'm going to zoom it in so that you guys can see the every, <clears throat> every one of those light blue stripes is twice as thick but half of the thickness has a pearl bump pattern on it. And so her idea, so this is a design by Andrea Rangel in collaboration with Gage Dye Works, which is a Canadian company. And so they have like 10 or 12 different colorways based on different birds. And the pearl bumps, I guess it's like a, 24 stitches across pattern and there's supposed to be like two stitches per month of the year and every time there's a pearl bump for that month is how frequently the bird appears in that area i don't quite know how it works for this particular bird the whole thing is pearl bumps so i don't know if in canada there's just great blue herons like all the time all year round no idea but it's like per particular to like Victoria Canada I think so not exactly the region that we're in but it's still a fun colorway and yeah I don't know how the pearl bumps are going to feel on the bottom of the feet don't know if that's going to be a weird thing or not but that's how the pattern was written and that's just what I'm doing so hopefully he'll be okay with that. But yeah, so hopefully, um, I mean, he he doesn't even have half a sock yet, but he's got bigger feet and yeah. So that is everything for Knitworthy. I think um, the only other thing I'm gonna share with you guys today, I'm running a little short on time. I have to get Owen from the bus in, I don't know how much time do I have? Yeah, I need to leave in like 10 minutes, so. I am just going to show you some acquisitions really quickly, and then that will be today's podcast. So if acquisitions are not your thing, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon, and leave me a comment below. Um, but if you do want to stick around and see what I got, I am going to be showing Spin Cycles Brand New Yarn Trine. Trine? Trine? I think it's Trine. So I did pick up some of that, and so... I wanted to show it to you guys, so stick around. Okay, so since we were just talking about sock yarn, I did just get the Knitterly Things. Actually, it's the month of October, even though we're at the end of November. I should be getting November's very soon. Um, for some reason, my October yarn never got shipped, so I actually only received this a few days ago. But I've got both of her October yarns right here. So that's what both of them look like. Um, this one here, this is her Remix Club. So every January, she opens the signups for this club, and it's when she takes colorways that she's done in the past but reimagines them into something new. And so this is called Toxic Remix. And I let her choose the base. You guys can choose the base or you can let Julia decide what base she feels like dying on. I just let her choose. So this is 80% uh, merino, 20% nylon, superwash blend. 
And so these are the colors, kind of interesting mix of colors. They're very autumnal, almost would be kind of like really good for Halloween, right? So it is the October. So there's kind of like a neon green and like a pumpkin orange in there um, and some gray and some brown. So that would be really fun for like a Halloween colorway. Um, and then the other one, which is really, really pretty, is called Surface. And it's also the same base, so 80% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon. And this is just her regular Sock Yarn Club, her Vesper Sock Yarn Club, which she opens up every three months. I think at this point, this will also open up again to sign up for January. So look for December, I guess, sometime. Um, and so... It's a really bright mini that she included with this, which is a little bit unexpected. So I don't always use the minis that come with the yarn. Sometimes I just knit without them. Sometimes I'll pair a different mini with them. And sometimes I just, yeah, leave them out altogether because sometimes I'll just collect the minis and then pull those for another project. So I don't know if I'll use it with this or not. Maybe I would for like Owen's yarn if I knit him socks because he does like blue and orange together a lot. So anyway, so that's my knitterly things. But the thing I really wanted to show you guys was the Trine from Spin Cycle. Um, they released a brand new yarn and I picked up seven skeins in, ugh. I picked up seven skeins in two different colorways, all for Owen. So they have some really, really beautiful colors, but this is expensive. It is a worsted weight. Um, it's a worsted weight base. It kind of, to me, looks a little bit like a thin worsted. This is the first color that I picked up. i just hide my face so we can do that. So obviously I bought this for, oh, and as soon as I saw these colors together, the orange and the blue, and I think I don't know if it's gray or beige. It's just kind of like a neutral. It's like a neutral color there. But since blue and orange are his favorite colors, he has outgrown all of his sweaters. So I have been due to make this kid another sweater. So that was my thinking in picking up this yarn. I said, you know what? It would be really fun to try this yarn. Let me sneeze. It would be really fun to try this yarn, and they have one that is Owen's exact colors. Um, and if I buy a sweater quantity for an Owen size sweater, it's at least not gonna be as expensive as a sweater quantity in a Lisa size sweater, because even though our feet are close to being the same size, our bodies are not there yet, <laughs> thank goodness. Um, so yeah, so I picked up, let's see, five skeins of this color. So there's only 150 yards. So I think it's like, does that math work out to like 750 yards? Um, I'm considering turning this into a flax sweater. That's a tin can knits pattern, which I've never knit it, but I know it's like hugely popular. So that's one sweater I'm considering. And the other sweater I'm considering would be to use this as the main color and make him another Owen sweater. So a few years ago, I knit him the Owen sweater, which is a pattern by Jill Z, what's her last name? Um, Zelinski, Jill Zelinski. I think she's Knitterella on Instagram. And it was so cute. I mean, she named it the Owen sweater because at the time she had a five-year-old boy named Owen. So, Obviously her five-year-old is no longer five. And at the time I had a five-year-old boy named Owen. Mine is now no longer five either. He is eight, I cannot believe it. So I might use this as a main color. I think from his other sweater, I still have some of this similar color blue and orange left over. Um, so I might be able to combine this with some more solid colors. So I'm just, I have to decide which pattern I want. I might ask him what he prefers. I might not, I might just, whatever I feel like knitting. I might just have to go looking for my stash though, if I wanna do that one and just see like what I already have. 
So he's going to get a spin cycle sweater. Lucky ducky kid. So that was um, one of the two colors. And then the other one, I only picked up two skeins of this one because again, spin cycle is expensive, but they had this color and he is a Harry Potter fan and he really likes Slytherin so much. And so this just really spoke Slytherin colors to me. And so I thought maybe I would knit him like a hat and mittens. Cause I, I mean, he still, his hat and mittens still fit, but um, I just like to knit him like new hat and mittens every year. So this will probably be hat and mittens for Owen. Maybe I'll combine it with some solid like black and gray or something for more Slytherin details if I wanted to do something. Or I might just knit him like a plain Slytherin like colorway hat. I don't know. So all of that spin cycle I bought for my eight year old. Can you guys believe it? Usually I just pick acrylic for him, but he is super knit worthy. If I knit him, when I knit him a sweater, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be in a size that'll be a little big on him right now so that it'll last him. I don't know. He's growing like a weed. So hopefully it'll last him at least next year as well, if not for two more years. Probably not. But the sizes, I think for that flax sweater, there's like a six to an eight and then an eight to a 10. So I think I would knit him the eight to 10 if I chose that one so that it should last him a couple of years. And then the next size after that is an adult extra small. So we'll see. I don't want to do the six to eight because I feel like he would just grow out of that too soon. So, all right. Do I have time to show you one last thing? Not really, but I will mention it really quick and then I will edit in an actual picture later. I got another Susan B. Anderson kit. This is the Gnomes. And it's called New Gnome and Wee Woman's Kit. And I will show you pictures of it. And just really quickly, there's, there's beautiful Christmas color yarns. And ah, I'm going to knit some gnomes. It comes with enough to make three gnomes. And there's three of us. So I thought we could each have a little gnome, like topping off our stockings for the holidays. So I'm going to be knitting some gnomes for this holiday season. So, okay, I will insert some pictures for that. I've got to go get my shoes on and get down to the bus stop. But thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that this was a fun episode, catching you up on all the things I have been working on. And I hope to not, not to go another month before I record again. So things should be calming down at work over the next like two weeks. And then I mean, the holidays and stuff. I'm not going to do Vlogmas this year. It's just too much. It was too much last year. It was fun, but it was too much. So no Vlogmas this year. Maybe I'll pop in a special holiday vlog every so often, but there's not going to be daily. Blah, blah, blah. There will be no daily Vlogmas videos for me this year. I just have so much going on trying to get um, my yarn listed into the shop, so which is not going to be released, like go live until 2023. But we're working on it. I have more than half my yarn in the shop now. And yeah, so 2023, you guys can get my naturally dyed yarns. It is coming, I promise. Thank you guys all so much. If you like this video, please subscribe. It helps me out so much and yeah. I would just really appreciate it if you guys do like these videos and do like my podcast if you could really subscribe and like the videos so that more people can find it because YouTube algorithm things and all that. So anyway, I hope everybody had an amazing Thanksgiving and good luck with the upcoming holiday season. I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.